Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. It is Monday, that means we get a new theme and this week's theme is title tracks. We're going to be looking at albums, well specifically songs, that come off of an album and share the album's name. And we're going to kick it off with an anomaly. You may have noticed that this video is a little longer than usual. Uh, for whatever reason, I decided it was okay to put Mirror Reaper into the Patreon poll for this week's theme. And it won by a very large margin. Kind of uh, perplexed. It, it makes me rethink my relationship with my patrons. <laughs> what they like to put me through. Uh... No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think this is going to be interesting. It is the longest song that we've ever checked out on the video. The second longest uh, coming in behind this, I think, was uh, Soul Niger Within from Frederick Thordendahl at like 43, 47 minutes, something like that. Um, and if we look at this as an entire album, which it is, this album has one track on it, Mirror Reaper. I think it's even the longest album we've listened to. If not, it sits in second place. Uh, Genesis's uh, Lamb Lies Down in Broadway is close. Being a double album, I think it was also in that 80 to 90 minute range. So this is a behemoth of a track. This is a behemoth of an album. Let's Let's get into it. Bell Witch's Mirror Reaper off of the Mirror Reaper album. very slow even slower if it is in four but based off of that one reverb right there uh, i'm counting five Kind of scared me a little bit.
Yeah, this is gonna be one of those, huh? What I meant by that, by the way, uh, is that tempo is, it's suggestive in that uh, the tempo is not consistent. Which is pretty consistent in do metal bands, especially when you start playing this slow. It's it's really difficult to get everybody right on the beats. Interesting.
wild that not only do not only is the song slow but even the vocals are slow and I'm not quite sure what to make of that if it weren't for the fact that the vocals that the, the, the music felt in real time, I'd almost say that this was probably a shorter song that had been stretched out uh, with software, especially given the sound of the vocals, but the music is in real time as far as I can tell, um, based specifically on attack. Attack is usually where you can sell it. Attacks and releases too. Not so much when it's held out, but like the tail end of a note. production in here is actually really good too. Specifically on the drums and whatever that really big sound is, but even allowing room and space for some of these trail offs to create an atmosphere around the track. I think the trail offs are specifically on the vocals though. But I think it's it's bizarre that four instruments is is making all of this really interesting the different atmospheres are going through this is very doom metal and so it's heavy and melancholic but like this is kind of an uplifting guitar line or I should say maybe bittersweet
I think what's interesting too is not that just that it's heavy and depressive, but there's there's a lonely isolation to it as well, even in the larger sections. This certainly feels isolating, but the larger sections still feel void of anything. I just chuckle because that's our opening idea right there. Uh, it, I kind of had this idea, maybe they're going to do verse, chorus, verse, chorus, <laughs> as if an 80 minute song needed any more repetition than it probably already has. interesting because it almost feels like an improvised solo. While there is a bit of repetition to it, especially on these chords that we land on, like that, it feels like the movement between the chords changes ever so slightly. They're not brand new ideas, but it's not repeating the same concept over and over either.
Okay, yeah. I can get behind that idea. If this song is supposed to be depressive, where each step forward is a Herculean task and everything feels impossible, barely even getting the string vibrating on the guitar is a good way to embody that in the performance of the music as well as the composition itself. I really like this uh, vocal style here. You have the, the really long lead-ins until the proper attack, and then the very long fade-outs as well, that allow all these uh, harmonic layers to happen. I do kind of wish they would layer up those vocals again. I kind of enjoyed that. The growls with the, uh, the chanting over it. Also, the audio over there. I mean, the way that they can just keep it solid up there. This song is just very large a lot of the time.
interesting decision to remove the guitars from this. Well, the higher pitch guitars anyways. Really interesting escalation. Yeah, okay, so this whole transition worked really well. Digging the uh, the textured layers, layer textures here, the two guitar sounds. I mean, even that's a really cool tone out there in the backgrounds. Very uh, foreboding, impending.
Yeah, we started to get too fast, so massive retardando. Let's bring that tempo down. Really interesting note intervals in this passage. Uh, the bass is also having a bit more activity than usual. And those growls, I mean, I haven't really touched on that yet, but they are massive. Just a really powerful vocal delivery. Definitely picked the wrong night to not get enough sleep on though. Not by choice. But I expect to have a few more yawns across this track. And I don't mean any disrespect to the music. up with that chord progression you know once again we're kind of pushing towards something bittersweet a positivity amongst all of the yes yeah, some negativity amongst all the sorry positivity against the negativity I mean, I know this is called Funeral Doom, but it literally sounds like uh, the vibes of a funeral. More so than some of the other Funeral Doom we've checked out. I mean, this specifically has the weight and agony and sadness, but uh, positivity too. Stuff like uh, Remembrance. Nostalgia. Even reverence of some sort. Just kind of reliving the good memories. Much like, you know, you do it awake.
and give or take we are around the halfway mark. For those of you who are sticking with me, we're almost done. Or I should say, <laughs> we still have 40 minutes out of us, but we're closer to being done than we were to the beginning of this. Harsh's sound otherworldly. I think a lot of that's the production on the harsh, but it's also a really low growl. It also has a really sl slow fry crackle to it, which makes it feel lower energy than uh, like a fry screen, for instance. And so the two of them really adds to the atmosphere of the track, uh, both the weight and etherealness to it, otherworldliness, uh, the idea of the mirror reaper, but also just the weight and lethargy are present as well.
Okay. I kind of like the dual harsh vocals. We are now moving from as above to so below. This is the second movement of the track. Um, Apple does not have it listed as a second movement. It is just a single um, 83 minute track, but uh, Rate Your Music does. Uh, and it specifically says track 1.1 and 2.1, which makes me think that uh, it's something about flipping over um, a record or something. Maybe we're on the B side now. But whether it was required of them to have two movements or not, uh, these two portions do have names. We just got done with As Above, and we're moving into So Below. Thank you. 
interesting shift on a lot of aspects I can't say I was expecting this type of clean vocal on this track but even the clean production and overall sounds we had more isolating sections on our previous movement as well but again nothing like this I guess the big thing is that this just feels more grounded. Everything prior, even in the isolation, was heightened. Dramatized, but this feels very... very grounded. Oddly enough, I'm kind of curious when we're going to get back to the Doom. I like this in... in concept. And I think if I ever listen to this again, it'll make more sense in a casual listen. but somehow they found a way to put even less musical information into each moment. Okay, now we're starting to build into something. drone is interesting we didn't have a drone in the first uh, half the first movement did we at all 
we were working off of two guitars uh, maybe just one guitar the chords I don't know anyways um, we were working off of moving intervals and this has a static drone that all the other notes are uh, referenced against
have to check who did the vocals on this to see if they have one vocalist uh, doing all the styles and they have four vocalists? Which is very cool. I think this answers my question about the movements, whether they were forced by the medium or something that they were uh, electing to do from the start. They certainly want this to be listened to as one whole song, but it does exist in two very different movements. A lot of similarities in how they're composed, but sonically, they couldn't be further apart. I'm curious if this is going to be our outro. The vocals are done, and we're going to work specifically with these organ harmonies with the drone in the background for the remaining 13 or so minutes of the track. It doesn't seem out of character. And 13 minutes is honestly not a lot of time for a section on this on this track most of the sections of this uh, album song uh, of course immediately just prove me the timing of it all
is it that I recognize a melody? I don't know what specific section from the first movement we are in, but we are revisiting some ideas, bringing this full circle in some way. Just a really powerful section. And these chords are really hitting. interesting to me that I hear some anathema in here as well, which I suppose makes sense because they're also doom, but I think it's more about the similarity in chord progression usage uh, and really understanding uh, chord theory in order to achieve these specific atmospheres and complexity of atmospheres. Uh, that they need to tell the story that they're wanting to.
I'm thinking this section is going to make a little bit more sense with, uh, with the lyrics. Right now it just feels like a little bit of extra padding. Probably could have ended it uh, at our fade out about two minutes ago. But I'm going to assume the lyrics are important to place here and that the music works well with that as an additional ending to the track as well really finding the most minimalistic form of the song. All right. Here's the thing. I liked that. There were definitely parts that didn't work as well for me. And I'd say m most of that comes in uh, the second movement. But on the whole, yeah, that's uh, that's the total package right there. Now, it's not usually my cup of tea. Doom metal, funeral doom metal specifically has bounced off of me pretty consistently, but I think a lot of that is not because of the music in particular, but because of the themes. I'm not a real big fan of depressive music, and that's what Funeral Doom specifically, but even a lot of Doom tends to, at least on the bare minimum, feel like. And that's not to say that Mirror Reaper isn't depressive. There is a lot of sorrow in this track, but they find ways to explore other components as well. Um, and to mix it with it, and sometimes to view those other components exclusively. The extended runtime of the track really allows them to fully explore uh, a lot of facets of music that I think, I mean, because here's the thing too, right? <laughs> this will tie back in, I promise. I didn't just cut myself off for no reason. This is 83 minutes long, and it's still only like six or seven sections of music. 
the thing with doom metal or any slower tempo metal is going to be uh, finding time for the for the variety when a single section of music is lasting you 10 to 15 minutes you're either going to have to write very long music or you're going to have to give up that feeling of weight by sticking around in sections for such a long time uh, for the novelty of moving between many sections. And so while you might have a slower tempo, the song's going to feel like it progresses faster. And that really is the big question when you're writing slower metal like this is, you know, what's the structure of the song and how does it apply to your themes? And for a lot of doom metal, it makes more sense to stick around with a section for as long as you can. And Bell Witch does the same thing here. They just have the added benefit of having a lengthy song where they can explore multiple things without giving up uh, the pacing. And so despite the runtime, I enjoyed this a lot more than most of the other funeral doom metal out there because it does have variety to it. And that variety actually comes through in a lot of different ways. You know, as I just talked about, it has a lot of atmospheric concepts going on, but it also just has a lot of raw, unique, uh, individual ideas. The riffs themselves, the melodic lines, even some chord progressions feel wholly linear. And are they fully linear? I, I don't know. That's actually one of the benefits of such a slow tempo is that it'll take you a minute to play 10 chords. And by the time we get to the 10th one, I don't remember how we started this progression. <laughs> you might want to loop it over at that point and I won't know the difference. So, you know, the novelty, not novelty, the uh, variety gets kind of baked in by utilizing longer passages. Um, and, you know, some bands want to lean into that and others don't. But I feel like Bellwitch did here. And a lot of this ended up feeling unique to me. M maybe not all of it. Maybe it was just a specific chord progression at a specific time that felt like it came out of nowhere and reset things. And now it feels like we're at the beginning of a new phrase when maybe we actually aren't. Uh, maybe the vocals, they use a, a variation, a small variation that by itself in a faster track, I would be like, oh, that's a nice, you know, ornamental idea to augment what we've already been doing. But given how long things are stretched out, I don't really have that overview of each individual section here. Um, and it just, it really is a benefit of playing longer passages. Whereas like when we checked out, uh, what was it, Ahab during uh, Doom Metal Week? I think that was the first Funeral Doom band we had on the channel. You know, I could pick out the four bar phrases or four chord phrases, however you want to look at it. I honestly don't remember. I think we were at like 30 beats per minute. So, uh, you know, bars could have been taking up a long time. I don't remember, but I recognized the four chords. I was like, oh, okay, we're in this, we're in this. And then once I feel the four, the four chord phrase, I can feel, uh, you know, melodies that are within that phrase or within two you know, two playings of that uh, progression. And so I can be I can begin to see the building blocks. But with something like this, where there's very few landmarks, uh, and then, like I said, again, the extended uh, writing, you know, don't write for four chords, write for 12, write for 16. In any other song, you'd barely be getting any progress, but in here you might be two minutes in, and by then there are very few people who are going to remember what the beginning felt like or sounded like, um, and you get that benefit of feeling linear. So yeah, a lot of this song ends up feeling novel to me uh, in that it all feels, or a lot of it feels unique, but it also explores elements 
and emotions and atmospheres outside of just pure weight and sorrow. And the two of those combined make it feel... I found it easier to connect with, I suppose. When you can't see the strings pulling at everything, it's easier to believe the puppet's real, that kind of vibe. I, I don't see the building blocks, I don't see the the constraints here. It feels like a song that anything could happen in the next second, or I guess technically, you know, half a second. That's usually how long it takes for something to happen here. <laughs> um, and I, I just really appreciate that. And it also gave me a little bit of extra appreciation for the, the band, whoever composed it, because they found almost 90 minutes of stuff to play that all feels interesting throughout most of the track like i mentioned the you know as below movement very repetitious for the first 20 ish minutes of of that movement and just having the drone with the guitar and the vocals uh, there was less to work with it was a simpler idea it had its purpose thematically i think of having a low point after 40 minutes of almost crushing weight but you know aside from that a lot of this track feels like it's progressing somewhere and not just cycling in on itself um, and to write 90 minutes even at this tempo of interesting ideas riffs uh can we call them riffs <laughs> they're very slow moving riffs if they are uh, no intervals, chord progressions, there's so many nuanced at, uh, emotions and atmospheres in this track. All of that needs to be written. And so, you know, this is just a massive undertaking, even just from a writing standpoint. Um, you know, there's also the performance side. This is, well, let me talk about this first. This is an exhaustive listen. I think part of that is purposeful. I already mentioned that the song feels more like a funeral to me than a lot of the funeral doom we've listened to. Uh, it has the mixed emotions to it. It has the fluctuating tempos. Uh, you know, anything can kind of happen. It has that uh, electricity to it. Again, in spite of the time signature, or in, sorry, in spite of the tempo. There is something about this that feels real, which is just such a weird way to word it, but that's what makes most sense to me. And I think the exhaustion is a part of that. The song is supposed to be weighty and heavy and depressing, but it also is a little bit bittersweet and nostalgic and there's tinges of joy in here at moments celebration maybe i said reverence earlier but i think celebration is a better word the idea though is it it feels like i just experienced a, a wake the morning of the loss but the joy in the memories everybody sharing stories of this person um and that is an exhausting event. Emotionally taxing, mentally taxing, you know, not physically. Um, it's not like anybody out there, I mean, they could be, I suppose, working out or running a 5K while they're doing a wake. But it's, it's emotionally and mentally taxing. And most people walk away from a funeral or a wake or both if they're done together uh you're pretty wiped out and that's that's where i'm at right now i'm i'm pretty wiped out and so i think it ties together with a lot of the the vibes of of the song you know what emotions it's tying or what emotions it's trying to do with its atmosphere and what the story it's trying to tell with its music and chord progressions and even the sonic elements, the textures of the instruments and the vocals and the layering 
feeling wiped out at the end I think is purposeful and it's not just because it's a long song. I've listened to 90 minute albums before. They don't have to be taxing. They certainly can be. You know, we've listened to Nile. Uh, and that was a pretty taxing album. But, you know, we also listened to Genesis, which I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, reaction. And I wouldn't say I was uh, exhausted by the end of that. It was a taxing listen for a critical analysis. But uh, I definitely don't feel the way then as I do right now. And here I did very little critical analysis. It was a, a lot of this was just wondering, hey, what are they doing? Uh, in like an emotional standpoint, there, there, it wasn't really moving fast enough to really have to worry about each individual instrument and what they're doing and how the tempo's playing into it and all of this other stuff that I usually, uh, you know, focus in on. This was a very brain off kind of listen and just kind of chilling with uh, the vibes of it. I did notice one thing. There's a lot of call and response in here. I don't know the purpose of that. It usually happens between the vocals and the guitar, although occasionally we had vocals and organ. And at one point we had vocals and vocal, which was very cool because it wasn't a second vocalist. But call and response is very popular throughout this uh, track, and I'm curious if they have a purpose for that or not. Uh, speaking of the production, real quick, uh, just phenomenal. Some places were super clean, some had really long lead-ins to the attack, some had really long fade-outs. Uh, sometimes the mix of these two made their own harmonies from a single instrument. Uh, some instruments were wide and large and booming and fuzzy and others were very clear as day. Some sections were overwhelmingly heavy with size and others were not. You know, when I think of doom metal bands, especially the very, very little I've been introduced to, and I, I want to emphasize that. It's not like I've listened to a lot of it. Um, at best, I think you know, like five, six tracks from maybe four or five bands. Uh, I, I have very little experience with it, but it's one of those those dingier styles of music from my limited exposure. Much in the vein of black metal, the grittiness and, and gnarliness of the production feeds into the texture of the song and what they're trying to do with it. And so do metal to me... Uh, especially funeral doom metal. I think I should emphasize that. It's especially funeral doom metal. Tends to go for a gr grittier sound above all else, um, even pushing towards lo-fi in some instances. But this shows that whoever mixed it... Uh, looks like we got a Billy Anderson and a Justin Ways, Wise. Uh, you know, they, they knew exactly what they were doing. What each section needed... Uh, they had the skills to showcase, uh, you know, several types of production to not even just uh, overarching production on an entire section, but individual instruments and what they need to pull out the specific aspects of the timbre that they want them to have. Uh, just really phenomenal production here, and it helps the entire track. It, re it really does. It's all unique, but it's all unified, and that is, uh, to me, the signs of a phenomenal uh, producer and engineer. Uh, I think that's it. I know that's not a lot to talk about, especially comparing ratio. Uh, speaking of ratios, <laughs> nothing to do with uh, the music itself, but I feel like this balances out an album I put on my my uh, my album list. Last week, I think it was, uh, over on the Discord, someone had mentioned Insect Grinder, which is, uh, it's a five, six minute <laughs> grindcore album where, uh, the vocals are done by crickets, I think, and, uh, I felt bad 
adding that to my list, saying, you know, I've listened to one more album this year. It's six minutes long. It's not even as long as most of the tracks we listen to on the album on the on the channel. But I think this balances it out. Five songs at six minutes total, one song at ninety minutes total. <laughs> That, that balances out the spreadsheet a little bit, and I feel a little less guilty about putting a six-minute album on it. I'm going to hit the lyrics right here, and uh, I'll wrap this up, I suppose. So the lyrics, they're even more vague uh, than... Uh, some of the other tracks that have given me issues over the years so i i really have nothing here i've i've noticed a recurrence of themes we have water dripping usually paired with uh some sort of ice or frozen elements there are mirrors there's the idea of reflection there is the concept of feeling stuck or bound uh, there is Reapers, of course, which I think is just death in general. And so the best thing I kind of got here is, is just the cycle of death, possibly, um, and how it's an equalizer. There's no escaping it, no matter how well off in life you are. No matter what species in life you are, death is coming for you sometime. It, it's what we all have in common, whether we're animal, bacteria, human, yeah, probably even extraterrestrial. You know, it's, uh, some something from another planet. Uh, immortality is is probably not something available out there. Definitely not within Earth, um, but I'd say probably even outside of. Although that's probably a very narrow idea of what can exist out there. It's vast, endless. Maybe there is some sort of immortality out there for some species. Anyways... Uh, and it talks about the cyclical nature of life and death. Uh, and wanting to possibly break free from the cycle, but again, nobody can. At least that's my take on it. Um, I also noticed in the Genius Annotation, it had mentioned that during the writing process, the drummer passed away. And so uh, in respect to his memory, they took some unused vocal tracks from his from the last album that he recorded um, and put them in, I think, it says uh, that they were placed in uh, the section of the song that serves as a conceptual turn in the piece or a point of reflection which I'm going to say is the beginning of As Below, which would be when we first shifted from uh, the doomier stuff to just the synth drone guitar, uh, acoustic guitar, I think, and the clean vocals uh, at like 45 minutes into the track, something like that. I'm going to wager that's where that was put in. And I like that because it is pretty close to the middle of the track. It's also where you would flip the album from one side to the other. It is a moment of reflection in many ways. Musically, we shift styles drastically. It's still slow uh, chord-based music, but as I mentioned, we also got rid of the dual movement for a drone with movement. Um, and it's just a lighter section altogether, chordally, sonically. It's it's sort of an inversion of where we were, uh, and you have to flip the vinyl over to get to it. Um, and I I really like all of that imagery that goes into it. And like I said, it is pretty close to the middle of the track. It's about five minutes I think after the middle. 
So, yeah, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Those are my thoughts on Mirror Reaper by Bell Witch. I don't know if I'm going to listen to it again, but I could. And I think that's uh, the biggest compliment I can give something like this. There might be a day in the future where I'm like, you know, I could go for some Mirror Reaper right now. And I don't think there's any other Funeral Doom I've listened to where i uh, gone in that direction. Anyways, my thoughts. What did you all think of this? Put your thoughts down in the comment section. I'm going to move through this a little quicker because we're almost two hours in. In the description, there's a link to Linktree. It takes you here. There's a bunch of stuff in there. You can support the channel, uh, find my music, and some other stuff. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. We have a special selection coming up, or actually, it's long gone. It's like two hours ago now, hour and a half. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.